So your friend loves figure skating, but they're always stressed about some Russians. Well, I'm here to tell you why they're always stressed. What is it that these Russian coaches do? And what do these Russian figure skaters have to go through that's got me and your friend stressed 24-7? <music> Our story begins in 2014. A little known coach, Eteri Tutberitze, manages to get her star skater, Yuli Lipnitskaya, all the way to the Olympics, where she does not win in her individual category, but goes home with a gold medal through the team event. Yulia's skate is so good that the clip goes viral, and Yulia ends up on the front cover of Time Magazine Asia. At the time, she was only 16 years old, and she went home with an Olympic gold through the team event, and everyone thought, what a wonderful start to this amazing career of these young athletes. However, just like the gymnastics, figure skating is a sport where the young and most importantly, the uninjured young bodies are the ones who triumph. So when Yulia started skating back home after the Olympic, something weird started to happen. Slowly but surely, Yulia's skating skills started to unravel. She started to fall on her jumps, she was skating slower, and her technique was generally wavering. Yulia did everything she could to stay in the game for longer. She left her coach, Eteri Dutperitze, after an alleged fight between her mother and the coach, but to no avail. The girl in the red dress, as she had been named after the Olympics due to her iconic Olympic performance, was on a downhill trajectory. And by the age of 19, Yulia Dibnitskaya had announced her retirement from competitive skating. By this point, Eteri Tutberitze had another rising star in Evgenia Medvedeva, who had already won everything in juniors, and as soon as she turned senior, she did the exact same thing. For two years, Evgenia went undefeated. Literally for two seasons, this girl was unbeatable. She was one of the few ones who started to win everything in her senior debut. She broke the world record 13 times, and she was nicknamed Miss Stability due to the fact that she very rarely fell and almost always had a clean skate. If we're comparing this to Dance Moms, she was Maddie. She was every week at the top of the pyramid. However, in this case, she was always at the top of the podium in every competition. She was also believed to many to be the favorite of her scary coach. So again, she's the Maddie in this Dance Mom analogy. Evgenia Medvedeva won every major international competition that she could win. The only medal that she was missing was the Olympic gold. And this dream was soon to become a reality because 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics was coming close, and Evgenia Medvedeva didn't really have any direct competition which could throw her off the Olympic champion path. Or at least, that's what everybody believed. The woman they've all been trying to beat since November 2015, Russia's unshakable world champion Evgenia Medvedeva, going for back-to-back -back world titles in Helsinki. Watch this one and marvel. And just 17. By the time the Olympics rolled around, Evgenia was 18, and her younger, stronger, and most importantly, less injured teammate, Alina Sagitova, turned 15, making her eligible for senior competitions, including the 2018 Pyeongchang Olympics. At this point, many in the figure skating community had already started to discuss how a Terry Tutberitze's coaching style was only fit for athletes of a certain age and maybe even of a certain gender, because Eteri has never been able to coach a boy. Most people in the figure skating community say Eteri breaks boys, which has proven to be true even in 2020. And because of the intensity of her coaching style, athletes in Team Tutberitze, as they have marketed themselves, have been given what is called the Eteri expiration date, which is 17 years old. After this age, her athletes' bodies begin to give up since her technique is based on low body weight rather than building muscle and strength for these jumps. So pre-puberty is when her athletes peak, and as soon as they go through puberty and become adults, they lose their techniques and their skating skills, which are usually underdeveloped and are not enough to carry them through a competition. This so-called Eteri expiration date came right on time, as almost six months before the Olympics, Evgenia got a fractured foot which she still skated on in Europeans, and it was the first time that she was beaten by anyone. And she was beaten by none other than her teammate under the same coach, Alina Zagitova. Oh. oh. I don't think I've ever seen her fall. I think 2016 in France was the last time she fell. That's quite a while ago. <laughs> I fall getting out of bed. I mean, that's impressive. It's been that long.
Ah, just... she can have a good chuckle at herself. Like, oh, I... <laughs> that's new, a mistake. 2018 Pyeongchang Olympics began, and everyone who once thought that Evgenia had the gold medal in the bag was now questioning it because of the injury and because of her younger, stronger teammate, who had come to cast her aside, just like she did to her old teammate, Yulia Ignitskaya. Be queen for a time. And comes another, younger, less injured, to cast you down and take all you hold dear. Both Alina and Evgenia skated beautifully at the 2018 Pyeongchang Olympics. They gave gold medal deserving performances. However, there's only one gold medal to take home. So by one point, literally 1.31 point, Alina takes the gold medal. As soon as Evgenia finishes her last performance, she bursts into tears, for the first time ever crying in a competition. She still didn't know that she had lost the gold, but she felt like she knew it was a very big possibility, and it became a reality when she saw the scores. She lost. Evgenia is crying, the commentator Tatiana Tarasova, who is a figurehead in the world of Russian figure skating, is also crying. And Terry's face just shows sheer disappointment because her favorite student doesn't win. It's literally a whole mess. Like, it's literally just a mess. I don't know how else to explain it. After losing out on gold, rumors start swirling around that Evgenia is leaving her coach of 11 years, Terry Tuperitze. Because that's the other thing. Evgenia is one of the only students which Terry has trained since the very beginning. Alina had only come to Terry two years prior to the Olympics. And technically speaking, because Alina had placed all of her jumps in the second half of the program, she got extra points for that, which allowed her to win. Because it is more difficult to jump in the second half, even though it might make your program's first half a little bit boring. The bonus points for all of her jumps in the second half became controversial, and the Federation actually enacted a rule which is now called by many fans the Zagitova rules, where skaters must have jumps in both halves. So both Ateri and Evgenia are constantly being asked if Evgenia is actually leaving to Tberitze. And although they both deny it, by May of 2018, Evgenia herself confirms and announces that yes, she is leaving for Canada to trade under esteemed coach Brian Orser, who has trained stars like Yuna Kim, Yusuru Hanyu, and Javier Fernandez. This unravels the craziness of the Russian fans. This is where Russian nationalism comes in. And for the first time ever, for the first time ever, really, a Russian figure skater is being trained by a non-Russian coach. Evgenia is being called a traitor to the country, crazy fans are using her Arme Armenian name as a slur because she's half Armenian, and they're also insulting her soon-to-be coach, Brian Orser, calling him fat and gay, even though he's actually chubby and gay. But they're using it as an insult because Russia is very famously homophobic. It's just a whole circus. It's a mess. And it's hairy. Being the mature adult woman that she is, she decides to go on a smear campaign against her previous student and goes on like three national shows and showcases her personal text with Evgenia Medvedeva showing how Evgenia ghosted her for like a month and a half and hadn't been replying to her messages and talking about how she found out about the transfer through the news and television, which is not true because a year later, the president of her previous school, Sample 70, said that all the paperwork had been done on time. So she very well knew in advance before it came out on the news. But the thing that she mostly talks about is how ungrateful and treacherous it is that her previous student, Evgenia Medvedeva, did not come to her with a bouquet of flowers to say thank you before leaving. This becomes a meme in the figure skating fandom saying that if you're ever gonna leave your coach, you better say thank you with a bouquet unless you want a whole smear campaign against you on national television. Kind of a high price to pay because you didn't bring a bouquet of flowers, but okay. Also, Terry declares war on Brian Orser, saying she feels challenged specifically by him because one, he took her skater, and two, he had previously talked about how these seasonal champions these interchangeable champions that Ateri creates are not good for the sport and are not sustainable for an athlete if they're trying to truly have a long career. Which is all true, by the way, but Ateri takes this as fighting words, and so she is determined to use Alina Sagitova as ammunition number one to disprove these claims, and also another skater, Elisabeth Rusebayeva, who had left her, gone to Orser, and then back to her as ammunition number two, to make sure that she beats her ex-student, Evgenia Medvedeva. And sadly, in Russia, what a Terry wants, a Terry gets. 
because World's 2019 podium is literally Alina Gold, Elisabeth controversially silver, and Evgenia bronze. However, I must note that Alina, after the Olympics, had a very tough time, and it seemed that she was even a little bit ahead on the Ateria expiration date, starting to lose her skating skills at 16. She ended up fifth at the Worlds in 2018, right after winning Olympic gold, so it didn't really look good. But she slowly got better in the 2019 season and ended up having the skate of her life when it mattered most, thereby taking gold at the Worlds. Meanwhile, Evgenia went through ups and downs both seasons, but everyone agreed that she made the comeback of the century by meddling at Worlds. However, pushing Alina so hard might have backfired on a Terry because almost immediately after winning Worlds 2019 and getting that last final medal, she announced that she was going to take a quote-unquote pause in competitive figure skating, literally only being 17 years old at the time of her announcement, right on time for the Terry expiration date. She cited that the reason she was taking a pause was because she no longer had motivation as she had literally won every single major competition that she could win. Which is true, but it is also very suspicious that right before turning 18, this happens again. Terry has yet to successfully train a student that is over 18. In reality, Helena probably has no motivation because of Terry's barbarian methods. She literally weighs all her students multiple times a day. She admitted it back in 2014 that Yulia was literally on a diet of only powdered nutrients. Like the girl did not eat a single tangible meal. It was all just shakes during Sochi 2014. And after leaving figure skating at 19, she had to be hospitalized for three months to battle her anorexia. Almost all of her students have admitted that it is a fact that on competition day, they're not allowed to drink water because supposedly every gram counts when you're not using muscle, but rather dangerously low body weight to get such high jumps. Keep in mind, that these are strenuous skills which even grown men practice timely and methodically because it has such an impact on your knees, back, and hips. These are children, most of whom we're not even talking about because we're only mentioning the athletes who have succeeded in the sport. Kids who have to constantly retire because their knees, their backs, and their hips are giving in before they even reach adulthood. At the same time, the sport which causes these injuries is not covering for the long-term effects it can have on your body, which can only be solved through costly surgery and physical therapy. For anyone wondering where the child abuse was going to come in, first of all, how sick of you, but also second, here it is. <sighs> now, if you're thinking, this just sounds like old regular sports drama to me. Like, what's so crazy about these Russians? Well, girl, let me tell you, we're only getting started. I gotta take you back in time to introduce you to some very key players. While all of this is happening, in the junior ranks, Eteri has managed to literally raise an army of tiny young girls who are doing skills which haven't been seen in ladies' figure skating for a good 15 years. Okay. Spice. Spice. And everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl. But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction. Chemical X. Thus, the Powerpuff Girls were born! Using their ultra superpowers, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup have dedicated their lives to fighting crime and the forces of evil! They are Alexandra Trusova, Anna Sherbakova, and Aliona Kostornaya, or as they're best known, 3A, because all of their names start with an A. These girls are literally winning every single competition in the juniors, taking over the podium every single time. They're playing it like musical chairs on the podium, only losing to each other. I have never seen anything like this in any individual sport where one coach just takes over the podium for an entire season. It's insane. All these girls are turning senior at the same time. Alexandra Trusova is the quad queen. She was packaged, this is a term that is used to describe the marketing behind an athlete, as the leader of the pack, who is going to take over as soon as they turn senior. This because she's accredited with the beginning of the quad revolution in ladies skating, because she was the first of the Atari girls to start landing consistent quads in competition. To put this in perspective, at the last Olympics, only one woman had ever landed a quad in competition. 
Eteri now has had four girls land quads, some of them very difficult ones that even very few adult men do. It is because of Trusova that all of her peers started to try and genuinely learn quads, and some even succeeded at it. One of those people who succeeded in landing quads consistently is her teammate, Anna Sherbakova, who also lands quads, but is the least talked about one in the group. And then, last but not least, is Aliona Kosurnaya, who is the artistic one with a triple axle. No quads, but a triple axle, and lots of stage presence. She is definitely the sassiest of the three. For all of you locals whose last interaction with figure skating was watching I, Tanya, the triple axle is a jump which Tanya talks about in the movie. She was the first American woman to land it in competition. The first woman ever to land it in competition was a Japanese lady. But so, this three took over the juniors, and as soon as they turned seniors, which was towards the end of 2019, since the season goes 2019-2020, as you can expect, they started winning. However, Trusova, the quad queen who had been marketed as the leader of the pack, who was going to continue to revolutionize figure skating and take over, is not the one who's winning the most international competitions. It is instead her teammate, as it always is with the Atari girls, it is always the teammate, Aliona Kostornaya the artistic one without the quadruple jumps, but the triple axle. It turns out that international judges want artistic skills paired with athleticism, rather than just pure raw athleticism, which is what Trusova was giving you when she would literally do five quadruple jumps in a program when most girls in the field can't even land one. Aliona Kosornaya was having such a season, such a successful season right now, that most people in the fandom agree that were it not for COVID-19, she would probably be world champion right now. However, many things would not have happened if not for COVID. Which brings us to the pettiness of these literal adults. Back in 2019, the first of many instances where adults were going to act like teenage girls occurred. When Alina Sagitova announced that she was going to take a quote-unquote break from competitive figure skating, most agreed that it was just a soft retirement. She didn't really want to say retirement because of sponsors and other political things. Many figureheads in the figure skating world commented on this quote-unquote break. Tatiana Tarasova, who was essentially the Atari of her day and is a very big figure in Russian figure skating, is a commentator on every international competition, she said, it's a shame that Alina's career was so short. Another Russian coach, Mission, said, good luck with your grandbabies, which is somehow insulting and nonsensical at the same time. And Evgeny Plushenko, who is a legendary Russian figure skater, who recently turned coach, suggested Alina should get a new coach, basically insinuating that Alina should leave Eteri and join his brand new academy. Eteri did not like any of this, specifically attacking Plushenko for being a fake coach who doesn't actually teach, but instead just poaches steals children who already have the skills. Keep this in mind because this will come up later that she accused Plushenko of stealing kids. This dumb scandal got so big, a reporter in the Kremlin asked Putin's press secretary if he had an opinion on the whole thing. And he literally said, no, I'm a fucking politician. <laughs> and when asked to comment on a Terry's clapback, Tatiana Tarasova just said, all of you go to hell. Like I said, this is literally bad reality television and no one can convince me otherwise. The only thing is that it's not reality television, it's actually real life and instead of dance moms, it's like dance moms on steroids because instead of random kids in Philadelphia suburbs, it's literal Olympic athletes and instead of moms, it is potentially abusive coaches. Like what, what, is, what is happening? However, we are not even caught up yet because COVID changed the game in Russian figure skating drama. It was announced mid-quarantine in May that the quad queen, Alexandra Trusova herself, was going to be transferring to the angels of Plushenko. Yes, that same douche Plushenko we just talked about. Everybody was going crazy and couldn't believe it, although many understood why she might have wanted to do it because she wasn't number one at the camp in Team Tutperitze anymore. Aliona was the one winning the most competitions, and Sherbakova and Valieva, Camila Valieva, a junior skater at the Atari camp, were being hailed as the 2022 Olympic hopefuls. What nobody saw coming, though, even Atari herself, was when just a month later, Aliona Kostronaya announced that she was following Alexandra Trusova to the Angels of Tushenko, leaving Atari behind mid-training camp, having already been given 
two new programs for the season. Of course, to Terry, like the mature adult woman that she is, she did what she does best. Talk shit about children on Instagram. She wrote an entire post going down the list of all the athletes who had left her. She talked about how all these children were just ungrateful. And then as soon as they started winning medals, they started acting like divas, making requests about who can and can't be on the ice. Essentially, she said that it's all the children's fault. She said that when Yulia started winning, she didn't want to train with Evgenia after that, then Evgenia didn't want to train with Alina after that, and then Alina Kostornaya had a whole list of girls that she did not want to see on the ice at the same time as her. She literally wrote the words, I know I'm doing everything correctly, so nothing's gonna change. Like, that makes you question if she has never stopped to think that maybe she's the one who's creating an environment that is so competitive and so toxic that is driving literally every star student she has to run away from her. In this post, she used a picture of Aliona Kostornaya throwing the jacket, her training jacket, in her face during warm-ups, which she actually did quite a lot, and it was very funny. But the most interesting thing about this post was that there were a lot of interesting things in the comments. There were a lot of comments supporting Terry because, of course, it's her Instagram, and Team Tutberitze is a literal cult, but there were also Comments of people like you and me who are fed up with the children blaming. And one of these comments said, once again, it is only the children's fault. This comment was liked not just by Yulia Lipnitskaya, but also by Evgenia Medvedeva. However, if you think the reason that Aliona moved to the Angels of Plushenko was to, because she wanted to be with her dear friend Alexandra Trusova, then you're wrong. Trusova initially moved to the Angels of Plushenko because one, she wanted to be number one in the camp, and two, she didn't want to skate with her main competition. And specifically, she wanted all the attention from Hot Sergei. Hot Sergei is a coach who previously worked at a Terry's camp, but he got poached, quote unquote, probably by a bigger paycheck, to move to the Angels of Plushenko. This is another reason why Plushenko and Terry have added animosity, because Hot Sergei was intricate in giving almost all of 3A their jumps. Specifically, Aliona and Alexandra have talked about his influence in him as a coach to get them to land her, their jumps. So when Hot Sergei accepted Aliona's call and told her to, yeah, come over to the Angels of Plushenko, it made Trusova mad. It made Trusova's dad mad, and it also made it so Plushenko had to make a complete schedule where neither girl shares the ice or even sees each other leaving or entering the building. And she had to get Alexandra Trusova, I mean, he had to get, we can say she because Yana's involved in any, everything, that's Plushenko's wife. But anyways, they had to get Alexandra Trusova, a new assistant coach, because after Sergei, hot Sergei accepted Aliona Kostornaya's call and told her to come to the camp, she didn't want to work with him anymore. So now she works with a new guy called Dima, who's actually kind of cute, and Aliona Kostornaya works with hot Sergei. But if you thought that the only thing COVID was going to do was break up the army that was 3A, then you are wrong because it made the perfect storm to enable probably the most scandalous coaching change in figure skating since 2018 when Evgenia left at Terry Tutberitze. Russian test skates are not actually a competition, they're more of a showcase for new programs. And this was the first time where all of the main players were going to see each other again since all the coaching changes. At test skates, the only athletes without a physical coach there was Evgenia Medvedeva, because Canada closed its borders indefinitely due to COVID. This made it so that she was stranded in Russia without a coach, and without the ability to train in Canada with her coach. By the time test skates rolled around, she had already been training by herself for about eight months, having limited ice time due to the fact that she didn't have her own training rink, but instead had to be invited as a guest of Tatiana Tarasova to CSKA, a famous rink in Russia and she would only get about 40 minutes of Zoom lessons with Brian Orser twice a week. And we all know how useless it is to try and learn anything on Zoom, let alone figure skating. So her performance at test skates, to say the least, was not her best. One notable thing that did happen, though, was that at the end of her performance, on camera, you can see Eteri Tutperitze clapping at the end of her performance. Their animosity is so well known that just the fact that Terry clapped politely at the end of Evgenia's performance was enough to be the head titles of multiple news sites. After the test skates, during the interviews, Evgenia stated once again that her main goal was to try and get back to Canada somehow because Brian Orser was her coach, 
the cricket club, the skating rink where she trains, was her family, and she wanted to finish out the rest of her career with them. So tell me why, even, not even, two days later, it is announced on new sites, five minutes later, it is confirmed on both Instagrams, and not even an hour later, there is a whole new segment, news segment, release confirming it with video footage and everything and even interviews that if Genia Medvedeva was going to be returning to her previous coach Eteri Tuberitze. Like, oh my god. When I tell you, figure stating Twitter almost broke, I am not kidding. Nobody would have ever guessed this would happen. At the beginning, people thought it might be a collaboration with Ryan Orser or a wrong rumor, or there was just no way she was going to go back fully to training with a Terry Tutperit. And then it was confirmed. Afterwards, it came out that she had been given options of multiple skating schools in Russia that were offering up their services because she obviously needed an in-person coach. But apparently her old school Sambo 70 stepped in and vetoed that possibility of her joining another school. And together with the Federation, they essentially cornered Evgenia and told her, if you don't go back to Sambo 70 and train specifically under a Territut Beritze, we will no longer fund your training. Allegedly. Because if you don't know, most athletes in Russia are state funded. So again, just want to say this all allegedly, that she was cornered and forced to go back to a Territut Peritze, but I mean, come on. It literally took almost the end of the world, a global pandemic for this to happen. Both Evgenia and Brian Orser told the media the same thing. This would have never even been a conversation had it not been for COVID-19. So this happened back in September, a little bit over a month ago. And in test skates, you could already tell that Evgenia was injured had some sort of injury, something was wrong with her back. Brian Orser confirmed this, saying that she had a flare-up of old back injuries, which she got from training for 11 years under a Terry Tutperitze's barbaric ways. And now that she's back under a Terry, she has already had to pull out from the first two stages of the Grand Prix series, which she was originally supposed to perform at. Although she is hopeful that they will be able to compete at least in two of the next three stages available. And like, the world is on fire. Like, I don't know how to end this. Like, this is just literally where we are now. And I haven't even gone into detail about the daily clownery that goes on in Russian figure skating. Like, all the fandom wars that happen, especially between the Medvedeva fans and the Sagito f Sagitova fans that literally came to a boiling point the other day when Sample 70 had his fifth 50th anniversary and invited Evgenia to raise the flag, but didn't even invite their own Olympic champion who has never left them. Or how literally Eteri had a war of words through Instagram stories with Blushenko's wife, Yana, where she accused them of trying to steal away Alina. And in response, Yana called Eteri an illiterate crazy woman who doesn't know that posting private DMs without consent is illegal. Or how there literally is an Eteri bonus in competition where figure skaters under her receive like 20 points difference of their scores just because they're training with a Terry, making it almost impossible for anyone that is not with a Terry to beat them. Or how Plushenko's wife Yana literally beat the mafia and stole a baby. Like, I don't even know how to explain that. Like, a bunch of memes were made out of her stealing other figure skaters because she's been stealing children since 2002 when she literally stole a baby. <laughs> we didn't even touch on the Russian doping scandal of Sochi 2014, which I'm sure most of you have heard about. Like this is just the tip of the iceberg. Again, explaining Russian figure skating drama in the simplest terms possible. So now I hope you understand. And now the next time your friend who likes figure skating is stressed with these Russians, give them a hug, buy them a cookie. Freaking make him a pancake. Ask them what's wrong and let them vent out to you because these Russians got me stressed. Sis is tired. Sis needs a break. Sis is me, is we.